praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord of the worlds, Master of the Day of Judgment. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to be here today on Jummah, the blessed day of Jummah, alhamdulillah, the beautiful weather in sunny California, alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It seems that we are seeing the end, are nearing the end of this COVID-19 pandemic, alhamdulillah. It seems that we can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel, the vaccines are being distributed, the COVID cases in the hospital are going down, everything seems to be getting better, inshallah, we are optimistic, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And so today, we wanted to briefly talk about how we can emerge from this COVID-19 pandemic better as a whole, as a Muslim community, how we can come out of this pandemic better than when we entered the pandemic. We don't need to be the same community that we were pre-COVID. We can be different from post-COVID. We can take this kind of, uh, the analogy like the pandemic, this time that we've been in quarantine is like a cocoon. And we went into the cocoon and we're coming out as a butterfly. So what do we, what do we mean by this? So when the Prophet wasallam went and made hijrah from Mecca to Medina, he gave the new community there some advice. He advised the new Muslim community there. They were creating a new way of life, a new society, and he gave them some amazing advice, Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And inshallah, this advice can also be applied to us as we go back to normal life as this pandemic comes to an end. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say to the people of Medina? Many of you know it. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Express peace, feed people, and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the night while others are sleeping. Spread peace, worship people, uh, spread peace, stop, spread peace, feed people, and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the night while others are sleeping. This is the advice that the Prophet wasallam gave the new community of Medina. So let's look at each one. So the first one, spread peace. What does this mean? We know what it means, right? When you see your Muslim brother or your Muslim sister, you're supposed to say, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And they're supposed to respond, Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is spreading peace. This, this uh, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi this greeting is literally, may peace be upon you. So yes, we're spreading peace in that way, and this is one of the rights that your Muslim brother and sister have over you. When you say as salam to them, they're supposed to respond. This is one of your rights the rights that your brother and sister have over you. But it means more than that also. Our scholars talk about how the Prophet ﷺ wasn't just talking about that. Spreading peace also means rectifying the affairs of the Muslim community. Bringing peace amongst the Muslims. Bringing harmony. If you see two Muslims arguing, your job is to rectify their affairs. Not to fan the flames. Right? So how does this apply to COVID-19? If, you, if we've been in this pandemic a year and post-COVID-19, there was someone at the masjid you didn't like or you had a falling out with someone or you don't speak to someone anymore, don't bring that baggage in the post-COVID world. We've been in this quarantine for over a year now. There's no need to hold on to this baggage. Right? We should spread peace. The Prophet ﷺ is telling us to spread peace to the new community of, of Medina. He's telling us to spread peace. And we should spread peace as we go back to life and start interacting with our Muslim brothers and sisters again, alhamdulillah. What's the second piece of advice the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave? The second piece of advice that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave was to feed people. And this literally means feed people and it's directly tied to the first piece of advice, which is to spread peace. Because when you're eating with people, something special happens. When you're breaking bread with people, something special happens both physically and spiritually. And the Prophet ﷺ, we know his sunnah, he never ate alone. He always used to eat with someone. And so, you know, one of the, the tough parts of this COVID-19 pandemic is that we have not been able to go into each other's houses and have each other's chai, right? It's been tough. But now, as we go back to COVID-19 to bring back the go back to the to normal society, and in order to bring back the kinship and the bonds, we should be back to feeding people. We should go back to feeding people and sharing food with each other. And usually when you see someone eating with another person, you know that they're pretty tight, right? They're not arguing, they're not, they're not people who, are, who don't like each other. You only eat with people that you like. And we know that uh, secular scientists, there's a new book out called 
the art of gathering. And they talk about this. They talk about how uh, something special happens physically when you're breaking food with other people. When you break bread with other people, when you eat, eat food with other people. So this is the second advice of the Prophet about, the second advice the Prophet about the Son of gave us, which is to feed people. We should go back to doing this. And then the last piece of advice was to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the night while others are sleeping. And inshallah this didn't stop because of COVID-19. If anything, this increased during the pandemic. Because now we didn't have to, we don't have to commute, you know, so we have extra time to, to sleep and we have extra time to rest. So maybe we got up during the night and we worshiped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah we pray that that never stopped. But this is the last uh, piece of advice that the Prophet Sallallahu gave us is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the night while others are sleeping. Inshallah, we can do this. Ramadan is right around the corner. Inshallah, we can start to do this. So this is the three pieces of advice that the Prophet ﷺ gave the community of Medina. And that inshallah, we as a community, as we start to enter normal life, we can start to take, follow this advice and go back and bring back the kinship that we lost and make up for lost time, inshallah. Inshallah, I wanted to shift gears very quickly in the last few minutes that we have together. We talked about in the first half of the khutbah about the advice that the Prophet gave to the community of, uh, of Medina and how we can inshallah implement this as we go back into normal society, inshallah. Now, inshallah, we want to briefly talk about this month of Shaban that we're in, that we are in, that we currently find ourselves in. This is a very special month. A, a, a very special and blessed month, and I know that many of you have heard khutbah after khutbah, talk after talk on this topic, so we'll keep it very short, inshallah. But there is a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he says, Allah looked down at his creation on the middle night of Shaban, and he forgives all of his creatures except for an idolater or one harboring malice. This is a hadith from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated by Ibn Hibban. <coughs> So there's two stipulations, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to forgive us, but there's two stipulations. There's one, the one who is an idolater, or one harboring malice, and I want to focus on the second one. Inshallah, the first one is none of us here. Inshallah. So let's focus on the second one. One harboring malice, one harboring hatred. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to forgive us in this month, brothers and sisters. As long as we are willing to forgive. As long as we are willing to forgive. We have an opportunity to enter the blessed month of Ramadan with a clear slate. But we have to sit with ourselves and ask ourselves, are we holding grudges? Are we holding baggage with our fellow, with one of our fellow Muslims? Not just Muslims, anybody. Are we holding grudges and hatred towards each other? You know, the, the, the main point of this entire football is very simple. Don't be mean to each other. Be kind to each other. Spread peace amongst each other. It'll be very sad if we didn't learn anything from this COVID-19 pandemic, brothers and sisters. How many janazah did we go to? How many people have passed away? How many people started this pandemic with us and are no longer with us? And are we really going to bring the same baggage and the same problems that we had pre-COVID back into the uh, post-COVID? Or have we learned our lesson? Have we figured it out that we don't, it's, it's not worth it? We don't have much time, brothers and sisters. One of the greatest fallacies of this life is thinking that you're going to have a long life. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. There's so many stories of siblings who are not talking to each other, people are not talking to each other in the community, vitriol between the scholars. You know, there was a scholar from the West he was visiting his sheikh in the Middle East. And he's, he was sitting with his sheikh, and his sheikh was pouring him tea, and he was complaining about the community in the West, the Muslim community in the West. He was saying, oh, there's so many, uh, all, there's all these factions, and everybody's fighting with each other, and everybody's arguing with each other, and there's all this vitriol between the scholars, and nobody can get along. And the sheikh just cut him off while he was pouring tea, and he said, did you teach them to make tea? That's all he said, did you teach them to make tea? 
if you look at the advice from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's not that complicated. It's not it's nothing out of this world or 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 like, you know, that we can't understand. Spread peace, feed people, and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the night while others are sleeping. It's very simple, brothers and sisters. We have to step on our egos and figure it out, inshallah. So that we can be a unified and loving community. This is, uh, we, we are heading into the second Ramadan where we might not be able to pray shoulder to shoulder right here at MCC, that all we prayer. We need to ask ourselves, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to tell us? But are we getting it right, inshallah? May Allah accept from all of us. May Allah forgive all of our sins. Ya Sultan Ustur in Banaya, for a little bit of Ruben, Ya Rahman, 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 Shalomullah <laughs> اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو عفو وانا يا كريم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار يا ارحم الراحمين يا الله يا ارحم الراحمين يا الله Ya Ahmad Rahim, Ya Allah. Brothers and sisters, let's pray for each other, inshallah. Let's pray for each other. Let's pray for our community. Let's feel the love, inshallah, as we bring, as the month of Ramadan is fast approaching. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prepared to forgive us in the 15th night of Shaban, which is next week. Provided that there are two things that we are not doing. One is you know, uh, idolatry, and the second is that we are not harboring malice. Inshallah, the first one, that, that's not most of us. But the second one, inshallah, we really need to figure out are we one of those people, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam 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 wa sallam